This video is an instructional video on the Excel project for financial accounting. So if you go into your lessons tab in your Blackboard course, um, you will find the Excel project file folder. So if you open that up, um, here we have our first submission. You'll have two submission. Each one is worth 50 points for a total of 100 points for this project. So if you click on the little blue hyperlink here, it will open it up and you want to complete it in Excel. So part of this process is, um, you know, getting you comfortable with Excel, whether you have taken it or not. Um, it is a course that we require for our accounting majors, um, but even business management majors and marketing majors, Excel is a tool that is used in business. So it's good to get comfortable with it. Um, so in the first tab though, if we look down here at the bottom, this is the problem itself. So it gives you what their trial balance was at the start of the month here in the top boxes. Then it gives us the transactions that happened in December in that next group. And then finally, we have six items that need to have adjusting entry done. So they give us adjustment data. So what you're going to do is you're going to complete each one of these tabs. So the first tab you come to is the general journal. So you're going to go back to the problem and you're going to journalize each one of these transa transactions starting with December 6th and doing a separate transaction for each day all the way through the December 29th. And then those will go into your general journal. So here you're going to figure out what my day, the day of the transaction is, what accounts these would go into, are they debits, are they credits. So that's testing your knowledge of chapters 1, 2, um, and I guess probably a little bit of three, but eventually three, but one and two just for the first journal entries. And then you want to make sure your debits equal your credits. Um, so if we come down to the bottom, these totals should equal. If they don't equal, you got to go back through those journal entries and figure out where you're off. That's part of, of accounting. Everything has to equal. Debits have to equal your credits. Okay, then the next tab is your T accounts. So your T accounts, um, I've set it up a little bit different, hopefully to make it a little bit easier. In these first boxes, you're going to funnel your transactions that you recorded in the general journal into the T accounts. However, the starting number is in our December 1st balances. So for instance, cash had a balance of $9,200 on December 1st. So you're going to come over to that T account and you're going to put in December 1st and that dollar amount, $9,200. Then you go back through your journal entries in, these, in the general journal tab and put any transactions that, that debited cash here, any transaction that credited cash here, and then the formula is going to populate. So let's say, um, you know, I'm just going to make some numbers up just to show you how it works. So, but if I debited cash for $1,000, $1,000 of cash came in, I would put that there and again put whatever my date is. This would be my December 1st date. Then over here, say I paid some bills um, and I and cash reduced. But you can see if you're watching me do this, this cell here has a formula in it. So you don't want to type over that cell that's in yellow. All you want to do is fill in these amounts. Um, starting with your beginning balance and then adding in all your transactions and then it'll create a balance. And then you do that for all of the accounts. So all of your accounts should be listed here pretty much in that same setup and you will just trace all of those general journal entries into the account and again those start with your December 1st balance. Um, then once you have those balances in, these yellow balances will go into the trial balance and you'll list the name, so you would put cash, whoops, if I can type, um, and then you would put in whatever that balance was. So let's just pretend what I was doing was part of your problem. Again, I was just making numbers up. But let's say that $9,000 is where I finished. Then I put in $9,000 here. And again, notice your formulas are going to populate down below. So you'll go through all of your accounts, put whether they're debits or their credits, and again, the trial balance needs to balance. So those need to be equal. If they're not equal, again, go back through your T accounts. Make sure you didn't put something in the debit column when really it was a credit or vice versa. 
Make sure you entered every single transaction that was in your general journal into those T accounts. Um, so again, you can see that this takes a lot of double checking. It's very detail oriented and very precise and you do have to take your time. Then we go back to the problem and we have these adjusting entries. So we have six adjusting entries that we need to do. We will record those here in our um, adjusting journal entry tab. And then we will come back over to our T accounts and then we'll put them down in here. So let's say um, we had an adjustment to cash, which is far-fetched, we really wouldn't, but let's say we did. I would put that in here and say, okay, that was a December 31st um, transaction. Um, and again, the year doesn't, is it not necessarily matter in this problem, so just the date. But then you can see it adjusts my balance. So then now all these red totals, once I go through and I do all six of my adjusting entries, and those are all listed here, again, debits equal credits. Then I'll come over into the T account, put them all into the particular accounts, and then pick up my red balances, and then create my adjusted trial balance after those adjustments. And then, um, after that, then this adjusted trial balance creates our financial statements. So again, you have to know, I'm testing your knowledge to know where do these accounts that you've listed all on this trial balance, again, you're going to be filling all these lines in with the different accounts from your T accounts. Where do they go to the financial statements? So are they income statement accounts? Are they revenues and are they expenses? Is it cost of goods sold? Or are they balance sheet accounts? And then if they're balance sheet accounts, things that we owe and things that we own, we'll put all of our um, assets, the things that we own, we'll list those. Are they current? Are they going to turn into cash in a year? Are they long-term property, plant, and equipment? Then what do we owe down here in the liabilities? Um, and then what is our what accounts are considered our stockholders' equity? And then, so you'll separate those again between the income statement and the balance sheet. Now, the thing that ties them together is this retained earnings. So our retained earnings, we have to look at what the balance was, consider how much income or potential loss went into that retained earnings, and then what is the ending retained earning balance as of December 31st. When we figure that out here, that is the balance that goes down into your balance sheet. So they all kind of flow together. So again, make sure you're looking back over chapter four to understand how the trial balance creates those financial statements, but that's a big piece of accounting. Then your closing entries, we have to close all of our income statement accounts. So you're gonna look at all the items you have in your income statement and they each get closed out into the income summary and then the income summary gets closed into retained earnings. But so then this tab really is gonna be pulled from the items that you have up here in your income statement and then your double check is what went into your retained earnings. And again, that's, all, that's also addressed in um, chapter four. And then our ratio computations, those are kind of covered in um, each chapter. And again, we're gonna talk about them in a separate chapter at the end of the, of the course. So we're jumping ahead a little bit with this particular computation, but it's very formula centered. So you're going to just go back to your to your financial statements, find these accounts, the formulas are given here, put the dollar amount in here, and then show those in good form. So um, if you want to look in the textbook, it's going to be chapter 13 that really shows those different ratios. So you can use chapter 13 as a point of reference. So again, it'll be two separate due dates for these. So look back into your lessons tab. And, and double check your due dates there. So your first submission will be right before you take test one. And then your second semester submission, I think, is the week before you take test two or the week after. Sorry, maybe the week after you take test two. Double check, check those due dates, though. So there's about a month in between them. Um, and again, the total is 100 points.